Hello world, Lockpicking Dev here. Today I have an Allmont rekey, and I'm going to show you how to take this thing apart and repin it. And let me tell you, if you don't feel like screwing up and wasting hours, uh, don't even mess with this because you're going to have to make your own tool to make it work because you have to make a tool that fits in this hole and you barely move that tool and your pins are everywhere and um, it sucks. The, it, this took me a couple hours. But yeah, so here's the uh, Allmont rekey. In my previous video, you see I made a key for that. I actually made this one six pins. I wouldn't try six pins again if I do this one. I'm not even going to take the driver pins out in this one. Um, I did make this one six pins, and I made uh, all the driver pin security pins, and that was the toughest part, is the driver pins. And let me show you why. So first off, to do this, we need a modified... Um, windshield wiper blade some people use music wire we need tape and i also discovered this that really helped it's a euro repinning tool so this little 3d printed euro repinner euro core repinner so what it does is you when you spin it around from the inside you can pin one driver at a time and as you spin it you can see how the rest of it covers all the rest of the holes once you're done so you start at the first pin second pin, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and then you put it in there. But let's show you how this all works. So this comes apart after it's picked or you have the key, you take this little tool, you stick it in the hole. First off, let's go ahead and get a measurement of this just because, uh, let's try to be complete here. It's, I honestly don't know what the measurement is. I haven't measured it yet. I just did it till it worked. So it looks like 1.15 millimeter. And let's go all the way up to the top. So at the top here, it's 1.25, but I would go 1.15. So 1.15 millimeters is the thickness, and it needs to fit in this hole. You can see the hole is kind of square. So you can see how much I had to file down this to get that. So you stick this in the hole, and this is the tool that's gonna hold your driver pins up. So right now, this tool going in is similar to the same tool with the Euros. Here, I actually have it right here. It's similar to the same tool like this for Euros, in which you stick it in and you hold the driver pins up when you take the core out. So that's what this is doing. Unfortunately, the Euro tools do not fit in that hole, so you, again, will have to make your own. But um, here is the part where you tape. Get out of the way. So you have to tape this down, and there is no if, ands, or buts about that. You have to tape that thing down, because you do not want that moving at all. You, you do not want this moving. <laughs> it's just that simple. So there we go, and I make it pretty tight. That way, if I want, I can push the metal in and out right there to the back and push it back in. But it's tight enough to where this will not wiggle a lot back and forth. So now we have this holding up the driver pins. Actually, I need to flip it over. That way the gravity is not pulling down the driver pins as well and uh, working against us there. So, oh, let's get a better view of the core there for the camera. There we go. Okay, so now we got that there. This is holding down the driver pins. Now, we want to pull the core out. So all you do is put something in there and just pull straight out. Let's see, there we go, it's coming out. And this is the hard part, because see, it's getting caught on my little tool there. And that's why I'm saying I recommend going 1.15 the whole way across. So yep, yeah, here goes our shackle. Shackle came out, ball bearings probably fall out next. There's no spring tension in this. Or no actuator like you see in a lot of locks. Let's keep that in there, because this is six pins. I'm not sure if this one has the six pin in it or not. So there we go. Slowly pulling this out. There we go. And I hear those driver pins clicking onto the tool. 
Hopefully they're staying in place. <laughs> I really don't want to deal with that. It really sucks, guys. I'm telling you, it really sucks. After I did the other one, I thought about not doing this at all, but here I am. Oh, yep, one came out. So, you can see in the very back there, one of those pins came out. So let me get a flashlight, see if I can help. See how in the very back there one of those pins came out, and see how the tool now, too, is a little off to the right, so I'm lucky. You can see it kind of, see the pin sticking up there. Yeah, see those pins sticking up right there, coming out of, out of their holes. The tool barely holding on, so I'm going to push that back over. And I'm actually going to push it all down as well. So this is the part that sucks, because to pin these now, you have to take your tweezers, hold these down, and with the tool, move this over to the one side a little bit to get that driver pin in there. And then put this little thin tool back on top of it. And this tool does not have a lot of tension holding these down. That's why you can see the ones in the back are springy, popping up like that. Alright, I'm back. I have a key made, and I'm ready to put the core back into the padlock. So first, I want to go over this use of this again, just to make sure that um, this is clear, because this is definitely helpful. I found it helpful for the first three, the um, pin that the cylinder locks onto um, back there. Right there, you can kind of see it right there in the camera. Yeah, right above the tip there. There's a little pin in there in the lock that that will not get past. That pin actually follows this groove right here underneath when you stick it in. Um, so this can only go back to that pin. So that limits you to only doing the first few pins. But the way you do it is you stick it in there. This will expose the first pin hole in the, in the Bible. Stick your pin in, turn it a little bit. First pin's exposed. Our first pin is now covered, and now this second pin is exposed. Now all first and seconds covered, third pin is exposed, and you keep pinning that way back. And so you keep doing that. You keep turning this, and see, now you can see all the whole Bible will be covered when you're at this point, so none of the pins can come out. And you turn it right there, and right there, none of the pins can come out of that thin hole. But this is the part that's important, so... Right there actually fits right onto our metal piece there that's holding all the pins in right there. I'm not going to push this all the way in because I really don't want to risk messing up the pins that are in there. But you can see how it does it. So when you're at this point, you want to stick that metal piece in to hold the first three down. That way you can continue pinning the last three or last two, depending on how far you want to go. Um, I'm actually a sucker for punishment. And uh, I did the sixth one because uh, the fifth one popped out and I said, no, well, hell with it. Let's go ahead and do it. So before we continue, let's make sure we're not missing anything else here. Okay, so we have our pins here. We have our key ready to go. All pinned up. It's ready to go. And so we want, there's our hole again. So we want that hole on the side right there to line up with that metal bar right there so actually before we continue this is what we need so my last lock I pinned in the last video I actually took a file one of these thin needle files and I took it to this groove where the metal bar follows and I filed this down till it was the thickness of this file which is only just a little bit wider so it won't do anything to the lock but it'll help make this bar feel a little bit better that way you can maneuver in and out you know safely so this is the next part so we want to put our clasp in and be very gentle with everything this is nerve-wracking there we go okay we have our clasp all the way in you can see that ball bearing in the very back there is falling down we'll get that in a second and now we want to Turn our core until it's on that groove is on top of that metal bar. Ooh, about to lose some pins, so actually I'm gonna fix this real quick. That's a little scary there. There we go. Oh hell, looks like we did. We lost the third one. So, heck with it, I'll try to show you real quick how to put this, uh, 
how to put a pin in. Lucky you. <laughs> and actually, I'm going to do a spool because they're easier to grab and they get caught on the metal piece there. That way, sometimes they don't um, fly out. So let's try this real quick. I'm going to put this in, push all the other pins down while I try to stick this new one in. And with this pick, I'm also moving the bar to the side just ever so slightly. There we go. I got the third one in. I'm going to cover all the pins back there and push the bar back over top of them. There we go. There we go. Whew. Nerve-wracking. So actually, I think I'm going to take this out of the vise for the last part here. That way I can maneuver it a little bit better in my hands and not mess things up. So, let's go ahead and move this vise out of the way. Give us some room. Okay, so now I'm holding the clasp in in the back. I want that groove to go along that metal bar. There we go. So there we go. You can see how that metal bar fits in that groove. Keep pushing it back. Make sure we're not getting any pin stuck. I bet you that we have a spool that's stuck up a little bit. Try to pull it back and push it through again. Try to move it just ever so slightly. There we go. Make it past that one. She saw how those spools were sticking up, so that could be a problem sometimes. Move it back and forward. Back a little bit. Oh, I wonder. That ball bearing. The other thing is we got that. Okay. It's not hitting the ball bearing yet. We can still hear it rolling around in there. Alright. I was going to end the video, but I decided that this was an important part and I need to show it. Yes, I do realize how ballsy it is to put the core in without the key in it. Yes, I do realize that. But I wanted to make sure there was nothing grinding against this uh, body when I was sticking it in because this is so sensitive. If I got it this far in, I put the core in, and you can see that about that far in, this is the shackle hole on the top. This is the main shackle hole. You can see that the ball bearing is just in enough. So you want to play with this, pull up this in and out just where, um, just at the right distance out to where that ball bearing is enough in right there. That way you can get your spring in. You get your spring in. And then your shackle. So when you're doing this too, these ball bearings, they're rolling around in there. So you also have to roll them back and forth and then push this in until they're separated. And then you see how far, and then you gauge how far the ball bearing is in to put the shackle in like that. So now the shackle's in. And that's when we push the core the rest of the way in. And so now the shackle can still come out because it's been picked, right? to or no I mean the shackle can't come out but you can see it's been picked so there we go that's it it's back in its normal shape it's still picked so now what do we do the moment of truth let's see how well our key is so we turn it back oh yeah push the shackle in turn it back there's all those beautiful clicks and there we go awesome and that was how to rekey an Almont rekey. Alright everyone, thanks for watching.